Paris. Hi, how are you guys doing? I'm doing good. I lost a bunch of weight recently. Uh, I lost like 100 pounds. Um, which is really weird, because losing weight isn't what you think it was. Like, I thought I would lose a bunch of weight, and underneath all of my weight, I'd be muscular and I would look good. I wanted a bodybuilder, I have a body of a dancer. I didn't know what was under there. Um, and also, when you lose weight, they don't tell you about the skin thing. And for a while after I lost 100 pounds, uh, I kind of looked like a smaller guy killed bigger me and then was wearing me as a skin suit. <laughs> Which is all <laughs> not good. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, and I, I realized I needed to lose the weight in a really weird way. Like, it, it was pretty unconventional. Like, you guys know what the Wii Fit is, right? Like, Nintendo Wii Fit. It was a video game designed for fitness, has a scale, you do a bunch of jumping things. I didn't lose the weight with the game. I lost the weight because when you step on this scale, your character that you make look like you turns round, starts sweating, and becomes visibly sad. And when your video games are all that you have and then your video games call you fat, it's a sign that some things need to change in your life. So I decided to do it, I decided to lose the weight. Um, and I, people ask me, well, you did it, how did you do it? Um, I did it drinking kale shakes. Which, if you don't know what kale shakes are, it's kind of like applesauce, um, except you replace the delicious apples with green vegetable sadness. Yeah, I know, it's gross. And some people ask how kale shakes taste. Some people want to know, you know, how that sounds gross, how it taste. Well, imagine Mother Nature standing in front of you, and she's the most beautiful person in the world, and she caresses your face so gently, and then she farts in your mouth for a year, or however long it takes you to lose weight. That's how bad kale shakes taste. Not very good. It's Mother Nature. I have a weird uh, relationship with Mother Nature. Because, like, we're doing terrible things to this planet. We're doing awful things everywhere in this world. Um, and then allergy season rolls around, and I can't breathe through my nostrils for the rest of its year, and nature can go fuck itself. <laughs> Allergies make me pro-global warming. Because, honestly, Oklahoma <laughs> needs a beach. Fuck the ice caps. <laughs> nature. I say, like... Nature can go fuck itself. I say that specifically because allergies, you know what those are? Allergies is nature fucking us. Like most people are allergic to pollen and spores. You guys know what that is? Nature's been subtly coming on our face since the beginning of time. That's pretty much what it is. Nature, pollen, spores, the reproductive material of plants and trees, get in your face and get your face pregnant with little booger babies. Nature can go fuck itself. Nature's weird. I don't know. There's nature. I coffee drinkers, everybody drinks coffee. Woo! Hey, you guys drink coffee? Yeah, coffee's the only stuff you can say, don't talk to me until I've had. Like, if you replace the word coffee with anything else, you're going to fucking jail or rehab. Immediately. Like, I think it's fucked up and discriminatory that the best part of waking up can be folders in my cup, but as soon as it's Jack Daniels, I'm a danger to those around me. <laughs> Our priorities are real fucked up. Coffee's really just baby cocaine that didn't go to college and reach its full potential. <laughs> Think of it, they're so similar. Coffee, cocaine, both start with C's, right? Uh, both of them involve, like, spoons and grinding at some point. <laughs> and unanimously, the best shit comes from Colombia. It's the same stuff. <laughs> what happens when you have a good cup of coffee? Right? Like, like, you're tired, you drink a cup of coffee, you get a bunch of energy. And then if the coffee was a little bit too strong, you get the jitters and heart palpitations. And then you come down and you need another fix. And somewhere in the middle of all that, you gotta struggle to not shit yourself. It's a fucking drug, people. Mm. <laughs> Jesus. I don't know what I'm talking about now. So, like... I, it's, I'm starting my senior year of college pretty soon. Uh, yeah, it's been a really great six years. Um, yeah. <laughs> it took him the same amount of time, too, to see the delay. I would have the thing, too. Oh, <laughs> uh, it took a second. I don't know. College has taught me, like, really interesting things. Like, such insightful information. Like, now I'm incredibly proficient in all aspects of Microsoft Office. And I know how to find Adderall. 
college has taught me great things. Like, honestly, like comparatively to me, college is kind of like prescription antibiotics, right? Because like, once you start, you really have to finish the entire thing, otherwise it's not worth it. Uh, both of them smell like ass half the time that you have to encounter them. And the efficiency of both of those things have dramatically decreased in the past, like, 25 years. I don't know. College is real expensive, too. My first semester of college, I took three classes. It cost me $3,000. I didn't live on campus. And it made me realize, like, it made me see money in a different way. And I realized all of a sudden, while my parents were so angry, uh, when they got the phone bill after I had a nine-minute conversation from a lady named Sasa in the 1-900 area code. That I called a sex worker when I was a child, and my parents were angry because I had to pay a lot of money. I'm sorry, that was wordy. I know it. <laughs> but it's really morally expensive college. Like, I'd have to drive I-44 every single day uh, to go to school. And I saw a sign on the side of the road that said, um, hit, hit one of our construction workers, face a $10,000 fee. Okay, first off, it's not hit one of our construction workers, face the guilt of murdering a person. <laughs> That's not what it says. It says, don't hit our construction workers to pay a $10,000 fine. Okay, so $10,000 is equating to one construction worker. That means my bachelor's degree in communications is worth three counts of vehicular manslaughter. <laughs> There's something morally incorrect about that. <laughs> It's just not right. <laughs> um, I, I grew up in the South. Uh, I grew up, and, and there's a lot of the good things about the South. Like, there's a lot of churches in the South, which was a big part of my upbringing. And uh, because I grew up in the South, there also was a lot of racist people, which was also a big part of my upbringing. Uh, like. What I want to know though, like, because sometimes these circles intertwine and the people that go to church happen to be racist too. So what are all the racist Christian people going to do when Jesus comes back and he's brown? <laughs> Jesus was darker than me, shorter than me, and hairier than me. If you were sitting next to Jesus on a plane, <laughs> you'd be a little nervous. But it'd be cool though, you're sitting next to Jesus, right? The stewardess brings you water, he's turned it into wine. Oh no, there's a crash landing, you're going over the ocean. That's fine, just grab hold to your nearest deity's feet. He's not sinking. Thank you guys, my name's Trevor. You guys have a good night.